the land that is a video and mixed media project based on our collaborative engagement with a 10 acre plot of land in County Donegal. The work considers this land from our combined personal perspectives and as a miniature territory in a discourse about land or lands in a wider sense. What's particular about this land in Donegal is where I spent my childhood and it's land my family farmed for generations and I have a great graph for it. Um, and what's been interesting for Andrew and I is how nature is reclaiming it. We've worked on the land that for five years since deciding to make a work specifically about the land in Donegal. There have been two major aspects to this working process. Firstly, devising actions, making video and audio recordings at the site at different times of year. To do this, we set up a temporary studio in the house attached to the land. Secondly, editing the video material we generated according to the emerging internal logic of the sequences and later according to how moving images might be placed in the gallery spaces at the Mac. For filming and recording, we adopted two rules. For any video sequence we made, our camera would always be on the land, although we could be looking in or looking out. And all the sound in the work would come from recordings made on the land or with objects found there. We established some rules in order to accomplish some kind of traverse of the land. Um, the land is no longer farmland, it's become quite wild, and the terrain itself is very bumpy and difficult to cross. So these rules actually helped us um, establish certain points of view within the borders of the land. There are two distinct parts to the work. In the upper gallery is a large projection and in the downstairs space a group of smaller interlinked installations. The large projection has the structure of a short film with surround sound audio. The intention with the audio is to frame the land as a terrain assaulted by weather and also to create the sense of a microclimate around the land that might have both physical and emotional aspects. The film includes two extended time-lapse sequences of neon signs which are planted in different parts of the land. Um, it's not unusual to see signs in Donegal fields, either for sale signs or adverts, but ours carry the enigmatic phrase it only remains until such time. The film shows a series of performative actions that we devised to focus attention on the land via human action. Throughout the film, I'm behind the camera and Francis is the visible protagonist. The human actions could be seen as explicitly gendered or as the actions of a person, Francis, articulating a very personal relationship with the land regardless of gender. I was trying to, in some ways, recollect or re-embody certain experiences I'd had as a child on that land. The first section in the film is me carrying a white chair. Now, that's a familiar image in some way. Um, people carried creels, carried turf, carried hay in these creels across the land. But I felt in some way I was carrying the family history on my back. It's a very simple metaphor. The section that I call, or we call the watcher, that um, for me denotes some form of guardianship. I feel uh, it was um, almost invested in me to take care of this land for until such time. Um, and I'm positioned in front of my grandmother's orchard. And as a child, that was full of fruit trees and um, berries and all these things that we ate and enjoyed. 
the action where I kick the barn, and that comes from a number of places. One is my own frustration that I haven't been able to take care of the buildings and the land in the way I thought I could. But also it heralds, in, it comes from an action that a lot of immigrants made before they left their homes in the olden days, 50, 60 years ago. The action of me probing the ditch is one that I, I particularly enjoy doing. And it's an attempt to get the flow of water going in the ditch again. They are clogged up. Uh, they're full of sediment and mud. And it was, for that moment, it did flow, but it will need, it would need more work than me just hammering it with a stick. Some of the images, objects and sounds used in the large projection can be encountered again in the smaller installations in the lower galleries. Here they're presented differently, sometimes like evidence gathered through experimental or research processes, sometimes like self-contained poetic instances seen in the context of what else is occurring around them in the gallery space. Our approach in the lower galleries is very strongly installative, we want the visitor to create relationships between fragments by moving among them. In a sense, the visitor is an editor, and we don't assume there's a single definitive way to put it all together. Almost every item in the lower galleries is on a timer of some sort. The whole space is like a model world whose parts move in and out of phase according to their individual time bases. The galleries are divided into color-coded zones, white, grey, green and blue. Each colour could be an element in a structural poetics of place. As in a whitewashed house, the grey stone and concrete of walls and outbuildings, green foliage and the blue of a wide open sky. In the white space, we show ourselves on two screens side by side. A kind of dialogue develops between us through a language of objects held up to camera. All the objects have at some time been left in or near to the house at the edge of the land. They range in age from decades old domestic tools to things left on the site by ourselves. Like finds from an archaeological dig, there are signs of familial, social or cultural investments in the land. It's inherent to this process that objects are very personal to me, are juxtaposed with uh, other objects that Andrew has selected from what we found. One of the objects shown is a sharpening stone. Um, and this was one my father used to use when he was scything the hay. And um, after he had sharpened the scythe, he used to stick it in the wall. So there are a number of these stones around the place. Along a seven meter shelf in the white space is a text on a single long strip of paper. It's like a data printout, but it's poetic in nature. The text consists of 72 different endings to the phrase, the land that, in groups of six. There's a loose chronology, running from deep personal memory via cultural and political contestation to an imagined future. We laid it out along the shelf to encourage the visitor to move into the installation as they read along the line. This is from the start of the text in the gallery. The land that looked out west, the land that charmed the heart, the land that was cleared of stones, the land that begat the heart, the land that called them out of bed, the land that raised the girl. And this is from around the middle of the text. The land that was told is Tara, the land that was kin to east and west, the land that was played as a fiddle tune, the land that was drawn as a lookout line, the land that was struck by the rifle shot, the land that was filled with mad Atlantic noise. Also in the white space is an object we call the water table. With this we wanted to create a model evoking the idea of the land as a kind of huge sponge holding a mass of water that moves slowly to and fro over long periods of time. 
The object went through several iterations and we ended up with a steel bar purchased in a Sheffield DIY store, placed diagonally in a tank of water. The water is from a tap in the Donegal house. The diagonal positioning of the bar reflects the long angled divisions made in the land outside by drainage ditches. The table rocks slowly. Due to the action of the water in the tank, the steel bar is gradually etched with something like a panoramic landscape drawing made of rust, whilst particles of rust are washed off and arranged as islands by currents of water in the tank. The plot in Donegal is in an area where the local water has a high iron content. In fact, up until the late 1800s, iron ore from the nearby bogs was extracted and exported. We thought of our water table as looking like an experiment improvised on a kitchen table by a visiting geologist to demonstrate something about the relationship of iron and water in the land. Adjoining the white space is the grey. Here a pair of projections present a meditation on the words once and here, shown as neon fragments attached directly to walls and surfaces at the edge of the land. A night-like quietness is periodically interrupted by a short burst of percussive music, during which two black kitchen chairs rotate in the centre of the space. This part of the exhibition came from thinking about social and cultural investments in the land. We developed the idea of a yard dance that's also a disco, whose only lights are the flashing once and here, whose only participants are old furniture. The yard acts as a zone between the house and the land proper. And my memories of people spilling out of the house during wakes and big nights and dances. But in the work, we've tried to contrast the harshness of the neon signs that say once here with the poignancy of the chairs that in some way bear witness to these activities from the past. Obviously nothing is quite right. The dance music is austere, made from stones and metal objects found on site. In some of the images the land is upside down, even if the text is not, and the chairs are made to be always off balance, whilst never actually falling over. In the green space, a simple two-screen installation shows what appears to be a field recording taking place in which two birds exchange alarm calls from two separate bushes on the land. In each video image a hand protrudes into frame holding a microphone and an old-fashioned oscilloscope shows a trace of what the microphone seems to be collecting. Here again things are not right. Various clues give away the fact that the images can't have been made simultaneously, meaning that the birds can't have been engaged in a true exchange of cries. The oscilloscope is one of the clues despite its appearance as a scientific truth-teller. Exactly the same oscilloscope is seen in each of the two video images, and it can't have been in two different places at the same time. The effect of the green installation is to create a convincing story about something that seems to be happening on the land, but in a form that gives away the fact that the story is artifice, rather than a reflection of fact. In the blue space, we've tried to make use of the height of the gallery to create a sense of overhead sky and air tingling with the chemical energy of the nearby Atlantic. On the floor are two wedge-like video screens placed like rocks protruding from a flat land. They're overlooked by two white kitchen chairs, spotlit, high on the wall of the narrow space. The pair of video images show lengths of red and white barrier tape being rolled out along intersecting diagonal paths across the land. A special device was made to carry the camera for these sequences to make sure that the violence of crossing the land at speed, at ground level, is fully conveyed. The red and white tape is suggestive of preparing the land for some kind of work involving division or change of use. The chairs here are obviously like the one carried out over the land by Francis in the film upstairs. And the screens could be showing the process by which the cross of tape, also in the film, was created. In this space we wanted to create a relationship between a creator's eye view and the rough world below. The creators in question could be deities, or persons who in the past wrought changes on the land, or ourselves as artists. 